Okay, you guys both have this one. Perfect. All right, guys. As we get started today, we're going to do something called a think aloud to get started. Now, to begin to think aloud, I'm going, we're going to read a text together, and then I'm just going to share my thoughts as I read. And I'm just going to write down on the left side, on your guys' corresponding paper, you have on the left side, what do I not understand about the text we're reading? And then in your own words, what is the text saying? So this isn't going to be really easy. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. And then I'm going to also ask what you guys think about my thinking. And you can say, man, I thought that was funny. I thought that was frustrating. Um, I didn't understand why you did that. I hope these are questions that you guys have once we finish this. So to start, we are going to come here. And it's on page 192 in your textbooks, um, starting at energy changes form. Okay, energy changes form. And first of all, this is in our section about photosynthesis that we've done several worksheets on. At this point, we just watched a movie on it. So we're just we're going to dive into the text here, and I'm going to show you guys what I think while I read biology. Okay, so here we go. Light. Sorry, energy changes form. Light, heat, and electricity are just three forms of energy. And after that, I think, well, I wonder what other forms of energy there are. And so then I just write it. Other forms. On this side. And I'm going to ask to start with, if you guys could follow with me. And also on this side... Just kind of follow with, with my, my writing for the first little bit, and then I'll let you guys know when to start your own. Chemical energy is another form of energy. Chemical energy is stored in chemical bonds. Energy stored in bonds. Man, that doesn't make sense to me. How could that work? How could that be that something... Energy is stored in bonds. Let me go back and read that again. Chemical energy is the energy stored in chemical bonds. So there's energy stored there. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to come back and read that again. When you light a candle, the wax burns. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I can agree with that. Wax burns. Oh, yes. Chemical bonds between carbon and hydrogen atoms in the wax are broken. New bonds form between these atoms and oxygen. Okay, I'm getting lost here. I'm getting lost, so I need to just stop here, go back. Okay, new bonds form between these atoms and oxygen from the air. Okay, let's go back one more sentence. Chemical bonds between carbon and hydrogen atoms in the wax are broken. Okay, so that makes sense. So, so let's go over here. So when this happens, there's burning. So when it's burned, it's breaking. Let's spell that right. Okay, that's really great. Burning, breaking. Okay, new bonds form between these atoms and oxygen from the air. Okay, so the oxygen, it has to be there with the file. I remember that the fire needs oxygen. That I remember that from, be from before. New bonds form between these atoms of oxygen from the air. What you get are new molecules of carbon dioxide and water. The bonds in the new molecules store less energy than before. Okay, so now there's new molecules of carbon dioxide and water. I don't feel like I've I 100% know what that means. Plus water. I know that carbon dioxide is CO2, but where does that come from? Okay. The bonds in the new molecule store less energy than before. So these 
have less energy. Okay, so I'm just going to draw that. I'm going to draw a picture over here of a candle, and it's burning. And then, so the energy is higher, and then after the candle is gone, and there's no light anymore, the energy is lower. Okay. The bonds in the new molecule store less energy than before. The extra chemical energy came from the old bonds, that came from the old bonds, changes form. Let's read, I need to read that again, I think I skipped a word or two. The extra chemical energy that came from the old bonds changes form. So there's a change that happens. I don't know if I quite understand what that is. The extra energy becomes heat and light given off by the candle's flame. I get that. So we have the new energy is heat and light. All right, guys. Just from reading that paragraph. What were some of the things you saw me do in my reading? You saw you stop when you're confused. You saw me stop when I, I was confused. Why is that important, Lakia? Why is it important that I stop when I'm confused? I feel like because just continuing on, you just get more lost. Then I just get more lost. Now, for instance, in, somewhere in there, was there a spot where I got lost and had to go back? Did you see a spot? A specific sentence that I had to go back yes. and read? Once or twice. Which one was it? Which one was it, Kara? Um, when we got oxygen. CH, carbon and hydrogen bonds were broken. When the CH, the carbon and hydrogen bonds were broken, I had to go back and read that a couple times. Yes. Did I finally, was I finally able to kind of make some meaning from it? Yes. How was I able to do that? You remember that fire is oxygen. I was able to bring something back from my prior knowledge. And that was, that was something I, I did there. That's really good. Now, Tiffany, what were some of the things that you saw me do when I was reading? Um, when I was reading through that. Uh, you made connections. Uh, I like how you drew pictures. <laughs> um, I, so I did, I did some visualization right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just noticed that you went back, and then when you didn't understand still, you went back even further. Like I said this before. I know we've talked about this before, but it's cool to be confused, because it means that something's happening. You're learning. And when, you, when you're confused, you can make a decision, whether to learn or whether to give up. And when, you're, when you get to a part in a paragraph where you don't understand, go back. Write down something that you don't understand, and then anything that you do understand, figure out what that is. And as you do these two parts interchangeably, when you're doing a think aloud, when you're thinking to yourself, or you're just doing it quietly, and you're reading it in your head, and then writing some of these things down, this is how you can make meaning of biology. If I just read through this for the first time without stopping or anything, this would probably sound like a new language. Like a whole different language of something that I'd never been exposed to before. But as I took the time to stop, to ask questions, to draw pictures, to visualize, was there anything else that you saw that you liked that maybe you might want to try when you're reading in the future? Anything else we did there? Besides rereading and visualizing? What do you think that we're going to talk about next? And you can use the pictures or anything else. We talked about energy and it changing form, like when we burn a candle. What do you think we're going to talk about based on the photosynthesis? Is there any connections you guys can make here? I feel like it's still pretty primitive. We need to read another paragraph or two to be able to really make that connection yet. But based on this, we've been able to see that. I would like you guys to read the next paragraph to each other and then use some of those skills that we've talked about. So if you guys could, um, Tiffany, mm -hmm. you'd be willing to read out loud and share some of your thoughts.
while you're reading. Would you do? Would you feel comfortable doing that? Mm -hmm. Just just here with with Lara Kay, and I'll have everyone else do it in their own little groups as well. Okay. Eighteen P. Living things use chemical energy. So living things, I think of plants, animals. One of the most important chem chemicals that cells use to store and give off energy is androsine triphosphate. <laughs> That's a big word. Um, uh, it's known as ATP for short. I like ATP a lot better. ATP is made up of, I don't know how to say that word, I don't know what it is. Sugar called ribose and three phosphate groups. So that sentence is just really confusing to me. I don't really know what that means. Uh, the phosphate groups are the key to why ATP can store and release energy. So the phosphate groups I'm guessing are really important. No, okay. Kea. First of all, Tiffany, I want to say that was really good. You were really able to take your thoughts and put them outside of your mouth. That, that's not easy to do. Okay, what were some of the skills and strategies you saw her use to try to make meaning of that text? Um, well, I definitely feel that reading slower helps. So she slowed down. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make a note of a couple, couple of these things that Tiffany did. So she slowed down. Okay. Was there anything else you saw that she did? <clears throat> she will first she try to relate it more so the living things use chemical energy so she thought of what living things are she made some connections and then she recognized where she got confused and then I got confused there too so that was really important you recognized your confusion. Um, but what you did something that was awesome right there. When you said, you know, I don't really understand what this sentence means. I'm totally confused. But you kind of, I, you didn't say it out loud, but you're like, I'm going to come back and try to figure this out after I read ahead. That is a great reading skill that I didn't demonstrate that you did, Tiffany. Because what happened in the next sentence? I figured it out. You were pretty much able to figure out the main point. What was the main point? Three that those three phosphate groups were, were really important to ATP and energy. So, Tiffany, I just want to know, as far as becoming a, a very good reader and making meaning of biology and biology texts, which are not easy, even for me, and I've been reading them for years, you're doing a great job, you're off to an awesome start. <laughs> so, today, I showed you guys how to think aloud. And you guys showed me that you guys can do it as well. This is a great way to make meaning from the text that we read. And I'd encourage you to do it on your own. And we're going to do it again um, in the future and even today. But we're actually going to take a break. And then, Lot K, you'll have a chance to try to do the think aloud. Is that OK? Yes. Perfect.